welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for another edition of YBM Cast. And today we have a special in the studio uh, head coach at UMSL University. I guess that's the wrong way to say it. It's University of St. Louis, Missouri. Or uh, University of Missouri, St. Louis. I'll get it right here in a minute. I'll just say his name, Scott Ewell. That works. Uh, coming off um, his uh, non conference schedule, we got him in the studio. Thanks for coming in, man. I appreciate you having me. Yeah. Uh, I got out to, honestly, it's, I, I was telling my wife yesterday, <laughs> that's the first college game I've seen outside of my son playing. Oh, there we go. I appreciate <laughs> us being the first one for you. I appreciate that. Uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I uh, got out to, uh, you guys were playing Winona State, and um, I said that correctly. Yes? Winona, yep, that's good. Winona yep. State? Yep. And... Uh, you know, so it was a lot of fun, and the weather was good. The weather was perfect yesterday. It was it was uh, it was a good weekend for us. <laughs> and congratulations, first series win, and not to mention, I believe you have already eclipsed the total wins uh, over last season. Not not quite. We uh, non conference wins were were way past. Only had one, but last year total they had twelve. So twelve wins. So we're uh, we're we're getting there Close. quickly. Seven and nine. Yep. Starting the season, um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, your uh, early part of the season, first first year, getting to know these kids, right? I yep. I think that's the the the, the biggest uh, takeaway. I think from anything is, you know, you're still getting to know these players, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Not even just as much their game as as, as just who they are as players on game day and and when this situation gets tough and when this situation's easy how are they going to react and some guys like the easy games and perform well in them some guys don't perform well in the easy games and some guys like the tough spots and, and some guys really don't so um we're, we're figuring that out with guys and, and they're all kind of showing who they are right now and and we're we're pretty we're pretty positive about about most of that which is a good thing yeah and uh, you know looking at the non-conference schedule um, you didn't shy away from anybody as far as that's concerned. You started down in Alabama Huntsville, and I think that's probably a weather-related situation. Yeah, get down there and, and try to avoid some of that cold and, and whatever weather we got up here. And It was cold and rainy down there, too, but it got us out of here. <laughs> you split down there. Um, when you sk- Now, do you set your schedule? How do those things work? What is that? Uh, thought process when it comes to scheduling non-conference yeah you know, a lot goes into it obviously just kind of location and, and where can we go play where we're going to play games early and not have to worry about getting them rained out and, and making them up later in the year um, but then just like I like playing good teams so I want to play teams that are ready to, to, to play and um, that are going to challenge us because at the end of the day we're going to play tough games late in the season so let's uh Let's let's get the rust off and let's go right away. So, this uh, this year, Huntsville and, and Rogers State were, were two really good teams that, that tested us right away. Now you split with uh, Alabama Huntsville and uh, you got swept by Rogers State. But I was looking at Rogers State. They're 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 a team that they were in the preseason top twenty five. Yep. Um, they fell out, but. They're still a very – that's a quality team. Yeah, they're it? good. They're, they just – they play the right way. They play hard. Uh, they don't make mistakes, and, and they're going to – they're just going to go out there and do everything right. And uh, and they did it, and we didn't that weekend. So, <laughs> we uh, – they play a style actually really similar to what we're trying to play. So, it was good for our guys to see good teams execute what we're trying to do, and, and, uh, and they did. You know, it's interesting when I look at scores and I look at box scores and I and I look at this. Roger State they come out in that first game and kind of put it on you a little yeah. bit. Um, second game was a little better. Third, second and third games were about the same, but that last game you lost six to five. So that shows me the guys are are understanding. Okay, there's we we're compete. Yeah. Let's compete. Let's compete. And I think you it is a learning process to learn how to compete is it yeah we, we've been talking about every single day we talk to our guys about that of, of learning how to win because winning is really tough and we talk about how tough it is and to to win you have to do everything right you can't do uh, you can't do something right for three innings and then take an inning and a half off and, and then try to do it right again because we just lost the game that inning and a half so we've uh we've talked a lot about how hard winning is and, and what it is that we need to do to win so we're uh 
we're learning slowly but surely. And, and I'm not a guy who who says let's uh, let's learn from our losses and because let's learn why we win too. <laughs> but um, but you do learn some things and and you do take your lumps and um, if you don't if you don't learn from them then you're you're making a mistake. So. We we are learning from we uh, we learn just as much from when we win as we do when we lose though so let's uh, let's keep winning. You uh, split your home opener, uh, Minnesota Crookston, and then uh, this past weekend you've won your first series three games to one uh, against Winona Winona State. Those are a couple of Minnesota uh, colleges. You're from Minnesota, yep. so that 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 you have relationships there, don't oh, you? Oh yeah, I, I know those guys really well. They're both in my in the conference I was at prior to this, so we uh, I went head to head with those guys every single year. So there there was some prior knowledge, and it was it was good to see some of the guys again, and it was also good to to know that I don't have to see those guys again. <laughs> so um, it was it was it was fun playing those guys though. Yeah. So that, I think I love those types of things because I think it keeps those relationships, you know, and people that, you know, and will you keep that on your schedule as you move through? Yeah, probably a little bit. Um, I don't know to, to what extent, but sure. I, I know next year we do have Concordia St. Paul come down. So um, and they're the same same thing in that league. So we uh, will probably keep it up a little bit to, to what extent. I'm not 100 percent sure yet. Right, right. It, it kind of it's fluid, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So. Non-conference, let's get into a little bit of this as far as uh, players, um, what you saw. I always like to start with pitching and defense, and let's start with pitching because, you know, until that pitch is thrown, nothing happens, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I, I think uh, we're really excited with where we're at on the pitching side, and we, uh, we've got a long ways to go. We're, we're still walking too many guys, um, but we're, we're coming a long ways. Last year's staff ERA was – was about ten, and, and right now we're we're in the mid sixes. So again, that's not a that's not an ERA to, to go around town and, and brag about, but it uh, it shows that there's some progress and the ability for our guys to make some adjustments. And uh, we do have some talent on the on the mound. So again, I think if we can if we can reduce our walk rates quite a bit, then then we're going to be in in good shape. We just we can't give in in innings. We've too many times we've we've gone first two outs of the inning and. And then also, the next thing you know, we give up double double or walk walk walk, and then we give up a hit or whatever it is. So we we got to finish innings still, and uh, and realistically, we got to finish at bats. We've we've got guys to, to two strike counts. We're not able to put them away, whether it is a strikeout or or just getting them to roll over or whatever it is. So still learning how to kind of put that finishing touch on on guys and, and on innings. So if we can if we can start continuing to to develop that, learn how to do that, then then I'm I'm pretty excited with where our pitching is going. That thought process, you know, we, we were talking before we started the show here. Um, you had an injury to your number one. Yep. Uh, I was out yesterday afternoon. I got out to a game yesterday, and, you know, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, and you told me that your starting catcher is playing second base yep. because of injuries and things of that nature. So that is a difficult thing with your pitching staff you have your starting catcher and trying to build those trust trying to build that uh that thought process to how you're going to pitch and each guy yep. moving through that stuff that that kind of that's a difficult process that's a difficult thing when you have those injuries isn't it yeah it is especially Torres on the mound because he's a ground ball guy and uh putting someone out there that's new is tough but the good thing is, is with our catching situation we've got two guys that are pretty much 1a 1b and they're both really good behind the plate mm -hmm. so um and they're both really good at the plate so it makes it easy for us to want to find find ways to get them in the lineup and the what i always say is is hit more than you give up like if you're gonna go play defense and you're not used to you better you better you better hit more than you give up so um and he did that but he uh defensively again we're we're coming into our own and guys are learning we're still moving guys around and and truthfully i think we're gonna be doing that all year i think we're gonna be toying around with some things so that okay then that goes to great segue I love because i was looking at you don't have your start your rotation set you're still that's a pro that's a work in progress defensively yeah i would say i would say we're pretty much set in, in most spots i think there's mm -hmm. a few that that every once in a while we're just again if somebody's if he's if he's hot at the plate then we're gonna have to find a way to get a lineup so um, I would say there's a few positions that are still pretty fluid, 
but uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. And I think at the end of the day, if you hit, you play, and that's the bottom line. That's how it is. And we can't take away from defense because you got to play right. defense. But yeah. if if you hit, you play. And I, I want to go back to the starting rotation. Are the, is that still pretty fluid? Or are you still or are you set on your four guys over the weekend? Uh, both, both. <laughs> um, both. I think, especially with our uh, number one, who's who's going to be back probably this week. Um, okay. We've we've got some ability to move guys around and, and kind of toy around with that. So uh, might be a little bit matchup based. Might be a little who's fresh base, who's who's been the best, and but also might be who's going to fit best in in the bullpen wherever we need it. So um, the the good thing is we got a lot of options, but we got a lot of good a good options. So. Um, Options are good and all, but if they're not good options, it doesn't matter if we have <laughs> options. Uh, we've got good options, so that's a good thing. And uh, I, I thought it was, uh, you know, Taurus went five yep. innings in the game. I, I'm refer- referencing the game that I saw because I think that's the easy way to do it. Uh, you had Logan Mance come in, um, gave you two innings. Yep. And no. He, he gave us three, three innings. Yeah, he went three. He got in a little trouble, but that uh, double play. Yeah. Uh, that was that that was that was a big play in the in the game huge, right there. Huge play. I don't know if there's a stat in the NCAA. I got, I got to go look that up about double plays turned as a team. But we've we've got to be top five in the country. We've turned. You turned three in the game I watched. Yeah, and, and against Crookston in one game we turned five. So That's, we've we've been turning it up the middle, which is good. That when you're up the middle, when you're strong there, and that was a heck, because that wasn't an easy line drive that he caught. Yeah, absolutely. That's the one you can easily fall on your face and it get by absolutely. it because it was really diving. Yep. It was a heck of a nice play by your second baseman. Yep. And uh, you know, and everybody doing, nobody standing and watching. He's getting to the bag, yep. knowing what I got to get back to the bag. Play, boom, got out of a, a tough spot a, for, for a really Manson, big spot right? for us, absolutely. And got to, at the end of the day, to, to win games, you got to make plays. That's one of the yeah. things that we've talked about. How hard winning is 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 yeah, we need to make the the easy ones, but who's going to make more of those 50 50 plays? And sometimes that decides a game, and, and that, that might have helped us decide a game there. I, I agree, I agree. Um, you had uh, Dylan, is it Woby? Woby, yep. He come in and closed it. Yep. Uh, both the guys from the bullpen, I mean, he, uh, as I said, uh, man's got in a little trouble there. But both of them look good. They've got some opportunities to, to I, I think, really get better and, and be guys from what I saw. Absolutely. What's your thoughts? Uh, wobie has been one of our closers. Um, him and, and actually Brady Cryle, who started game one yesterday, um, have been our two closers this year. And um, wobie has been really good. He's got a couple of really nice pitches that have been – been pretty tough to hit so if uh if he is available we have an, another guy behind him then he's kind of been our fireman to get us out of big situations um and he's done it every time i mean he comes in with those i mean i think he's got three three pitch strikeouts to end an inning uh wow. when he comes into a game already this year so he uh he's been really good and man he hasn't thrown a ton yet for us but when he does he's coming in and give us some length and um the ability to kind of to kind of stretch a game for us and, and not have to use six guys because when you have to rely on six guys being good, it's a lot harder than relying on three guys being good. And that really stretches your weekend, doesn't it? Yeah, 100% it does, especially on Sundays. <laughs> especially on Sundays. So when you, when you need it, you don't know what you got left. Get a lot of tired arms in the bullpen. Yep. That that makes that uh, that those last couple of games hard to win. Yeah, absolutely, it does, and, and that's that's just the the story of a four game set. Mm-hmm. They get tough, and sometimes it's. Uh, Who's got the most available? Then that's who wins game four sometimes. And we had the most available, we won game four. How many guys uh, are you carrying as far as pitching is concerned? You know what? It's a little bit different every every week. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say it's been between eleven and fourteen. Okay. So um, we've got a couple guys that have earned opportunities that haven't got them yet, and and or have gotten very very limited opportunities, but it's. It kind of shows the guys that have thrown been thrown in front of them and been thrown pretty well. So um, we got some arms that are that are still chomping at the bit to to get rolling, and and their time will come. It's just uh, they got to be ready for it. Uh, before we move to the offense, there's a couple of things, and we talked about the double plays, and I thought that was really good in the uh, the defense that I saw. And the other part of it was your outfield. I I thought you showed a lot of speed. Guys got to the gaps. Uh, yeah. Um, the young man uh, Stokes Stokes, yep, made a heck of a play. 
Yep. Saved a saved a run. On He's that. the fastest kid I've ever coached. It is, is it's unbelievable. He can he can go get it in the outfield. I I really thought that took. I, there was a couple times. There was a couple uh, hits in the gap. I was like, man, that could get down. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, you know, he just goes coasting in there like it's nothing for him. So he uh, he's he's probably saved five or six balls, and some of them he gets to relatively easy that other people won't get to at all. And and you don't even you kind of take it for granted because he's he's making it look so easy. But he's <laughs> he's he's fast. He's got 15 stolen bases for us already this year, so he he can he can move. That was that was impressive. The young man though. Uh, for Winona State, I hope he was okay. The one that went face first into the yeah, that was uh, that was scary. And he got up like nothing happened. I know. He, uh, I think he kicked himself in the back of the head of his feet. It was he was bent so awkwardly. Oh, was... um, but yeah, he got up and shook it off and <laughs> went and played the rest of the game. Didn't even didn't flinch. I would have been telling my catcher in the uh, in the dugout, you get you get your depth yeah. reception is way off. Yeah, I, I don't he know if the catcher said anything. You got room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was pretty tough. Yeah, that I was, was a little tough. scared for that one, but good for him. He got up right away. A uh, couple of questions though in the game. Uh, just, just uh, I want to ask you because there was a couple of uh, play uh, plays in the game. Early in, you had uh, a, uh, a double steal, and the players were sent back. What was the call? Yeah, so the the catcher hit the umpire's face mask um, on his on his back throw with his hand. He ah. hit, the, hit the face mask, and at that point, it's umpire discretion on if they need to go back or not. And I, uh, To be honest with you, I saw it immediately, and I just kind of put my head down hoping they didn't say anything, and uh, and they did. And um, Just kind of one of those unfortunate situations. Gotcha. Okay. I was yeah. wondering, because he didn't call him out, so that wasn't interference. Yep. So I was just curious. I didn't know what had happened. Yeah, just, just one of those things that just – the game of baseball caught up to us, and it uh, it is what it is. Now I thought they missed a balk on one play, uh, and you then know, they held up a finger. What what were they telling you? I, I thought they missed a couple bucks. Um, and, and I, the, the thing with that is, I think our guys probably balked a couple times, mm -hmm. and so I, I think it kind of evened out a little bit. Um, but uh, they with the with the one finger, that's just you only get uh, you only get one step off without making a throw to a base nowadays. So okay. Um, when you step off, and if you don't throw, they're going to give you one. And then the next time, if you do step off again before you make the next pitch, you have to make a throw to a base. Otherwise, it's a ball. Okay. All right. Well, rules. Yep, See, rules. That, understanding the rules. rules. Yep. That was curious because that's what I was looking at, and now I'm going through my mind because I've umpired a lot of high school baseball. Yep. And so it was curious what they were – it always is curious. Yep. I, I watch what the officials do, not for the sake of – and, and like I said, not to beat them up, but just curious about how the game is being officiated. Yep, yep 100%. So, offensively, um, it's been up and down a little bit. You've yep. got, a, you've got a, a handful of guys that are, are doing well. Um, and I'm going to start right off the top with the young man uh, that I th is hitting in your three hole. And uh, uh, what is it, Brandon? Brandon Oleon, yep. He's hitting 435. Yep. Which is good. Yeah, that's really <laughs> good. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he he can hit. He, he can uh, he can do a little bit of everything and um he's just come up in some some spots and and put some some really good at bats together for us. So he started driving runs. That's one thing we've kind of talked to him about is he's got to have the ability to drive and runs for us. Um, cuz he is our best hitter and not that we're putting the pressure of our offense on him, but when you are a lineup's best hitter, you got to drive in some runs, and he uh, he did that this weekend. This was uh, this was a big weekend for him, and a big a big weekend for us because he drove in runs. And when you when you look at our offense and, and the runs we've put up this weekend, when when your best player drives in runs, you score runs. So and the, he actually created a couple runs for himself as well, just by hitting a double and stealing third, and, and then scoring on a pass ball or whatever it was. I think he did that three times this weekend. I, so since you brought that up, I, I had this question. I really enjoyed watching how aggressive you were on the base paths. I, yep. I think we had talked about that early on. Yep. Your your mindset, but watching that, I mean, you really didn't stop running the whole game. Yeah. And I, I want to know because I was watching Brandon on second, and he got he that was a great read of the pitcher in my estimation. Yep. He just took that base, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He, uh, it, we, we work on it every day. I mean, base running and, and stealing bases is something that we start practice with every single day. And um, 
Well, some people do some sort of base running every day, but we steal bases every day. Um, we we don't have power. We have two home runs as a team, so we right. uh, we need to create runs differently, and we're trying to do that with our legs. I think we've got fifty. I think it's fifty stolen bases in sixteen games already. So we're uh, we're moving, and our percentage is pretty good. I think it's fifty for fifty seven. I believe so. <laughs> um, we're not we're not getting thrown out a ton. We've gotten picked off a couple times, but at the end of the day, when when you are going to try to be as aggressive as we are, that's going to happen. Right. So right. as long as we're doing it smartly, and uh, I think a couple of times we've got thrown out were were pretty bad decisions, and that makes it even makes it even better. I think because if we can keep fixing decisions, then our our percentage is just going to keep going up. And if uh, if the percentage stays there, it gets better, then we're in really good shape because we've got some wiggle room to even even lose some percentage points on that and then still run. So I'm pretty excited with where we're at out on the bases. I, I thought it was impressive. I really enjoyed it because uh, I, I was kind of waiting for you to slow down, you know, let's see, is you got the lead yeah. and whatnot. No, it was just like I was – and that and that really took that second game. I yep. mean, you put so much pressure on that pitcher, on the catcher, uh, that – it really at that turned the game completely. Yeah, it did. We got to third base a couple times and we scored on three pass balls in the one inning. So yeah. um, the more we can do that, and what we tell our guys is when we do have the lead, the bigger the lead, the more aggressive we are going to be. Obviously, to, to a point. Sure. But uh, when you have the lead, it kind of opens up that ability to, to crank up the aggressiveness and, and keep it going. You've got. Uh, uh, Three other guys hitting over 300, uh, Carson Holland, uh, Bryce Kalinske, who was catching yesterday, yep. and uh, uh, Justin Simard, who was – that's the young man you were saying. He was playing shortstop yesterday, but he's your regular third baseman? Yes, he is. He's a freshman, and he's – I mean, he's done everything. He's – he. I think he's hit in all nine spots in the batting order at some point this year. <laughs> he's he's played four different positions for us this year. Um, he, he just – when you look at a kid doing all those little things right, he's done that. He doesn't. Uh, he's not going to flash a, a ton of crazy elite tools. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the strongest guy. He doesn't have the best arm. He doesn't have the best range. But when you look at the end of the day, um, who got the job done the best and the most? It, it's usually him. So he uh, he's just uh, for being a freshman. He is calm, cool, collected, and. Um, understands the game of baseball and understands what we're trying to do and does it really well. When I'm watching the game, I didn't know who was freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Yep. I went home after the game and I was doing my research and I saw him as a freshman. I was like, that's pretty Yeah, impressive. we're we're excited about him. We we are. And when you've got eleven runs, eleven RBIs, yep. he's producing runs, which uh, you know, as you're talking yep. about, I mean that's that's tops on your team as far as RBIs and tied for run score. Yeah, and uh, which is funny because he's not – he's again, he's not your prototypical RBI guy. It's not like he's coming up with, with bases loaded and cranking doubles. Like he's, But if he's got a guy on third base with less than two outs, he's going to hit a ground ball to the shortstop or he's going to put the ball in the air. He's going to drop a bunt and score him. So, he uh, again, it's not the flashiest way, but when it needs to be done and he's at the plate where he's pretty confident it's going to get done. Well, but I think that's the, the biggest thing is you, you talk about how do you change culture? What is a winning mentality? You had uh, yesterday in that second game, young man got two strikes, hit the ball to the right side, scored, yep. uh, I think it was only, it was only on, on from third. Yep. Um, that's winning baseball, yep. isn't it? That's how we scored our first run. Only on hit a double, stole third, hit a ground ball to the second baseman, and we scored. So, um, not the again, not the flashiest game of baseball and, and – not the one that I'm 100% used to playing, but one that we got to buy into, and we've done that. That's awesome. I love that stuff. Uh, offensively, what do you – because I think, you know, when I saw the guys at the top, you have you have guys that can – they're good at bats. They have an understanding of what they're working on. Where are you getting that production at the bottom? You know what? It's, it's different every day. I mean, it's – sometimes it's this guy or that guy. I mean, the production at the bottom has been – Again, that's where we really try to put pressure, and, and we try to put the ball on the ground and bunt, and we try to we try to just do a lot of different things with with some of those guys, and um, hopefully we find one guy that gets hot for the weekend and and goes from there. And, and Mitch Green had a, a big game, and Andrew Bisher had a had a couple of big games this weekend, and um, 
they kind of take their turns down there, and, and that's okay because that's what we need. We just need different guys stepping up in situations and helping us score as many runs as we can. So after the non-conference schedule and, and as you're looking to get into uh, that uh, conference play, you know, give us a, give us a feel, an overall assessment. Where, where, you, where do you think you're at, Coach? I, I'm excited with where we're at. If we, uh, again, we've – I said I don't like learning while we lose, but we, we have learned a lot. <laughs> and uh, we've, we've done a little bit of everything. We've, we've got the feeling of being swept, um, and we know how bad that sucks. So we're not going to do it again. And we've got the feeling of winning a series, and we've split a couple. So we, we've got a little bit of everything, and we've, uh, we've given up 26 runs in a game. We've given up zero runs in a game. And we saw the difference of what it was in both those of – what it took to, to throw a shutout and what it looked like to, to give up a big number. And we've done the same thing. We scored zero runs and we scored 12 runs. So we, uh, we've done all of it. We've, we know the feeling. And the good thing is, is I think guys understand what it takes to get to the good feeling more often than the, than the bad ones. So we're, uh, we just, again, we got to keep playing our game. That's what we tell the guys this all the time is don't get away from who we are. Sometimes we try banging it a little bit more than we, than we can. We have two home runs. So, why are we going to try to continue to do that? So, if we can if we can keep applying pressure offensively and and just being a team that nobody likes to defend, then we're uh, we're going to keep developing as a team and just throw a few more strikes on the mound. We'll be all right. You're going to open in Kansas City uh, next weekend yep. uh, with Rockhurst. Uh, you got a Tuesday game at Maryville and then uh, at William Jewell. Yep. So you got uh, you got a pretty good road uh, couple weeks. Yeah. Um, what are your expect expectations? Uh, you know, Rockhurst, William Jewell on the road. Um, how are you approaching uh, this opening of the conference? One game at a time, and that's. Uh, I mean, we uh, we know what we have to do. We know what our plan's going to be, and. Um, we're going to put the guys in the spots that earn those spots and, and go to work. And the cool thing is we do have bye week in between Rockers and William Jewell, so we'll have some time to kind of catch our breath and and heal up whatever bumps and bruises we may have, which is good. And uh, and then we'll be able to kind of go from there with it. So we're uh, we're excited with where we're at. And, again, we have we think we've got guys that we know what situations we need to put them in. And now it's our job as a coaching staff to put our guys in the situations they're the best at as often as we can. Very good. Um this is a tough conference. The GLVC is one of the the better uh, Division Two conferences. Um, what is your you know you, after William Jewell Rockhurst? Of course, they, those aren't necessarily the powers of the conference. But then you got Indianapolis, then Truman State, then you have uh, Southwest Baptist, Quincy, Missouri S and T, and you finish with the the big dogs, uh, Illinois Springfield. Yeah, so the best for last. I, I think that's interesting. I, I like that. Um, I think it gives you a chance to grow. You're going to see, and then you're going to see that uh, that group. You're going to know pretty close to where you're you are as far as seating is concerned yep. for the conference. Um, does everybody get into that conference tournament, no. or you got to play in? Yeah, you got you got to win yourself in. So top eight make it. Top eight. Yep. So that last weekend could be a a, a fun one for us to go show who we're going to be going into that tournament. So we're excited for it. Very good. Now, we were looking at this, um, I was, and I kind of show, you know, I was looking at this last night, and to kind of give you an idea, I mean, we're looking at the top 25 for Division Two. Illinois Springfield is number 12 in the nation right yep. now, and deservedly so. Yep. They had a really good run last year. Uh, Drury, who, you know, we uh, just talking about common opponents, uh, you guys just finished playing Winona State. They'd played Winona State the week before. Yep. Uh, they swept them. You guys won, uh, beat them three games to one. So, I mean, you know, when you look at common opponents and those types of things, I think that gives you a pretty good idea that, you know, you're you're going to be able to go and compete at that level. Yeah, I, I think our guys know that right now. And I think uh, this this non-conference schedule showed that. So, um we're we're looking forward to getting into that kind of everyone calls that second season because the first one is is that non-conference and, and that's over now. So we know it's not going to be easy in, in the weekends of of even those down teams. Like you don't show up and, and play your game, you're going to get beat. So <laughs> we've uh, we've got to show up every weekend and, and every day and and play our game. And I think we'll be okay if we do that. Yeah, the other uh, team that I think is going to be interesting and and you have them. Um, 
I believe when I was looking at this. Yeah, you have Quincy at home, yep. which I and and here the fans and whatnot. Now, uh, you guys played at Lindenwood this this yep. past week, in which I'm sure because of the rain yeah, and whatnot, yeah, our field is a little wet, <laughs> a little soggy, a little, a little soggy. <laughs> but um, you know your home schedule: Southwest Baptist in in April, Quincy in April. Uh, you you're at S and T, but then you come home for Illinois Springfield in May. If you're, you know, what would you say, you know, fans, you want to get those people out in the stands, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, especially with the nice weather we've been having. So we're uh, we're playing a, a new brand of baseball, a fun brand of baseball, and um, we, we encourage people to come watch us and, and cheer us on a little bit. Do you – is there a cost to get in the ball games? There, There is a cost. Um, it is it is extremely affordable. It's, I think it's $5. $5 yep. per person? Okay. I'm sure kids get in free. Kids get in free, correct? Yes, <laughs> kids get in free. Do do students pay? Is there a student discount? A student all, a students uh, at also get in free, and then there is a student discount for high school kids. Um, I believe it's three dollars for them. Very good. So you want to get it? It was a fun game to watch. Go out and watch some college baseball if you're. And I would encourage high school kids. Absolutely. You know whether you. No, and not this isn't anything, Coach. Whether you're thinking about going to Umsel or not going to Umsel, and I would suggest you go to that Maryville Umsel game. That's two very good uh, quality teams pl- yep. heading off there. That's a great one. Go watch some college baseball. I think it's uh, interesting uh, for that high school player who wants to play at next level. Absolutely, it, it's too many people think that it's it, Division One is this t- is the the greatest thing of, for baseball, but mm-hmm. Division Two baseball has got got some talent and. Um, Every time we have a, a kid, or maybe it is just recruit, come watch your game. They always say, "Man, this is a lot better brand of baseball than I thought." So we can uh, we got some guys who can play, and it's uh, it's fun. Absolutely, and it's not like you aren't seeing. You know, these are top twenty five teams that are that will be. You know, Illinois Springfield is going to be at your state. What's the name of your stadium? Uh, Umsel Baseball Field. It's just Umsel Baseball yep. Field. There you go, Umsel Baseball Field. Look it up on the campus, um, Coach. Congrats! Appreciate I appreciate it. Early, early, early success. Yep. I know it. You know it's a seven and nine record, but you feel good about where you're at. You, you know, obviously, we always like that to be flipped, but uh, it, and it's tough to say. Yeah, I'm extremely happy with where we're at because we've lost more and we've won. But uh, but from the the growth that we've seen, I think we are building to be that team that we want to be, and um, more positives than negatives coming out of it early on. So that's a good thing. Very good. Very good. Uh, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. We're going to have some more. We're going to get Coach back in the studio, continue to talk some Umsel baseball, especially as we move into the not, uh, to the conference schedule. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to get out to the ball games as much as I can and watch what's happening. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. I, I do too. All right. Uh, coach Scott Ewell, guys, Umsel, uh baseball head coach. Make sure you follow him. I, I'm sure you got the Twitter feed up there. Follow Umsel Baseball. The Twitter is right up there. Make sure you you, you watch, pay attention what's going on out there. Uh, I think it's uh, U-M-S-L-B-S-B. There we go. I don't have it in front of me. So. Good thing you didn't ask because I'm not the Twitter guy, so that's, I'm, glad, I'm glad you had that. <clears throat> yeah, we got it up there for you. So. Yep, go to the website, check the schedule. That is, uh, I believe it is. There you go. UmselTritons.com forward slash sports forward slash baseball. She's got all that. She She takes care of me. That's why she does. She takes care of me, man. She's good. (laughs) That's what we do around here. Uh, Everybody, thanks for tuning in. We do appreciate it. Uh, Make sure you uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter at YBM cast underscore or at YBM undercat underscore cast. Man, it, it's words, Monday, bro. Words are tough. It's Monday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is Monday, and uh, we haven't got into this just yet. So there you go. I'm going to shut up now and just enjoy, subscribe, like, comment, share, and uh, we'll see you all next time.